Okay guys, they were not kidding on this one. That trailer's completely dislodged from the tractor and resting on the guardrail. But you know us, we got a plan for this man. To do it quick and efficient. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's approximately two, three, something in the morning. I lost track. Responding to an absolutely major accident. Got both sides of the freeway shut down so i'm stuck in this parking lot of a freeway once i clear here though i'll be able to pass those uh flares not quite sure on exactly what we got something about a tractor trailer went over the center divider right here so it's on both sides of the freeway oh but they're gonna talk to me well, it should be a fun job guys wow they weren't kidding it is on both sides of the freeway. The trailer's torn open and it's loaded. So, I might have to get a Lando and load it sideways. I tried to record in the beginning with the iPhone, but it sucks, so I got the Pocket 3. Mike is going to take care of this tractor. As you guys see, I mean, catastrophic damage. Now, right here on the back of the tractors is where the fifth wheel plate goes. You notice how it's missing? That's because it's right here. It's still stuck on there. I got the game plan, man. You can see it's torn in the back, but Alex and I are gonna attempt to barrel roll this. See, right now where I'm walking is the westbound side of the 210 freeway. And since the tractor's facing the wrong way, we want it on the eastbound side where my trucks are at, so. We're gonna barrel roll this baby straight over the center divider and land it right here. Heck yeah, man. No one has. Dude, it's like crazy. I'm gonna have to lift it. I'm gonna have to lift it. Yeah, it's because it's attached to the pull pins. We have a smaller chain, hold on. But we're gonna wait till Mike pulls the tractor out of the way. Alex is gonna help him before we set up the rotators. The reason this is very risky is because you risk the load coming out the trailer. It's not like a container that's rigid. But some trailers are stronger than others. You have reefers, dry vans. The front is still held up. I think it's gonna hold for the rest of the way. What we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna use my auxiliary winches with snatch blocks. We're gonna use those as catches. It'll give us a very nice spread. Uh oh, 
Someone's blocking the cop. Hey, Alex! Action 5! Uh, hey, I'm thinking of, uh, obviously, both main cables for the lift. Catch auxiliary lines with snatch blocks in the first stage the way they are now. Yeah. Because if you figure by the time we bring it over, we're going to get it really close, so the auxiliaries are going to be perfect. Okay. So there's also, if you see, uh, who is this, Jans? I'm not sure, but there was like five, six cars involved. There's one flatbed up there, two, three. I passed two on this side. But let's get my uh, auxiliary line set up. Oh. All right, go up with the green cable. The green cable? Green cable. Boom up. Boom up? Yeah. All right, hold it. That's broken. Um, I don't know if you want to put wood under it. So you can get under it? Suck it in! Yeah, but it's, uh, the brakes are locked. It'll drag it, right? It can. They have to go really high with it. Yeah, that was off the ground since the back wheels. Say hi, it doesn't drag it. What? Told you way. I'm not gonna drag it so the wheels are locked. Put some wood under it and just reposition. Whoa. Right there, right? Yeah. Okay. I got my boom locked out a very good amount. Now this won't be my final spot. I still have to go forward, but in the meantime, I just want to walk it out. Yeah, I don't know how we did this. Oh, I get it now. If he was going eastbound, obviously he was in this lane. I don't know. Trucks aren't even supposed to be in the fast lane, so beats me. Now while I got my light on it, look how bright it is. I'm gonna test and see if I have to do a pre-pick. Yeah, I do. There's no gap on the back. Now a pre-pick is an excellent way to determine if the load's gonna hold. Wow, kids toys. My kids will love this. Nice. Now let's take off the kingpin, the fifth wheel plate. The fifth wheel plate from the kingpin. I got my angle irons to spread the tension and my super cool custom two foot wide Bailey's blue recovery straps. A double wide one? I'm gonna have to in the rear because the back 25% is almost empty. 
that's where the gap starts, like right in front of the tire. So I'll just, I'll focus from that, uh, the front axle. That's all empty anyways on that side. Going that way, you'll do the kingpin with my arm. Um, yeah, I guess I guess I put it down. Yeah, and you'll go that way. And Are you shooting in night mode? No. Are you? You could. Yeah, see how it comes out. How does it look? Test it. So this is something I don't use often enough, called the Wreckmaster Wrinkle. 50,000 pound working load limit. This bad boy is awesome for jobs like this. Oh yeah! You could even do a, a lift and a catch with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did on that um, boric acid rollover with my dad. Are we gonna barrel roll it or just straight catch, lift and catch? We have to barrel roll it. Yeah. That's the only way, man. Because I'm looking at it, I don't see many other options. Like a CHP right now chewing out these guys. That's why I always laugh when people say, how come I didn't put cones out or this and that? It doesn't matter. That's a horrible thing for me to say and everyone should do it. But when we do them, they just get ran over. People are constantly going over the, the flare pattern, coming in here, getting close. These California drivers just don't care, man. You can have a thousand cones. You'll get people that hit them. Now these are super cool too. They're shackles for the straps, but they come with a, a chain and a grab hook. So one more strap and all my rigging is complete. What? Go starts here. Huh? Go starts here, so I'm gonna go here. For your catch? No, 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 for my first lift. Oh, for your first lift? I'm, right I'm running one this way, that way. Yes. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> tired, boy. I know, dude. You look tired. Yeah, we were there the whole day. Yeah, I got there last night. Uh -huh. Last night about 9 o'clock. Okay. I'm uh, coming straight from there right now. <laughs> Still on fire. Oh, yeah. Nah, it's going to burn for, for a, a couple of days, yeah. Well, the rotators are done rigging, but they're having technical difficulties with this. Thankfully, Thankfully, we got Java Joe in the house. You guys can see this axle completely came off. It is a lot worse than we had initially thought. I thought it was just the, the rear tires. So Joe's using mechanics wire to tie up some pieces because that's preventing the underlift. The forks from going up, it's in the way. Is that enough wire? You're good? Yeah, that's good. Not Perfect, enough. Joe. Team no sleep, baby. Is that the tie rod? Yeah. 
Nice, man. He jacked that up. See right there where he's tying it up? Broke off from... There, so right there. Go ahead. Right there. Now you can reach. Now okay. we got it. You got it, Joe? We got it. Go up. Yeah, both sides go up. Up. You got it, baby. Up. More, more, more. Up. Up. more. That's enough to get it out of here. We had to cage the brakes. There's no air. Cage bolts wouldn't fit. But it's good now. Hey, yeah, if you guys got wheels rolling, let's just get it out of the way. Oh, look, ABC7's here. Beautiful, man, beautiful. Whoa. So if you can see the outriggers on the rotators, we're already back to back. The outriggers are extended. We're ready to pull forward and, and already rigged to the trailer. rims are bent man how do you bend every rim so what do you guys think was the cause of this I mean to do this much catastrophic damage five other cars destroyed in the process Ooh. oh beautiful beautiful man let's get in position how far you want to go up because I need room You know what, let's just eyeball it. I'm putting my, half, my boom right here. I'm gonna throw my boom off the side and go forward. I'll follow you on the two way. It's looking great. We had one quick correction. We put it to the second stage after all. Because if we're gonna barrel roll it, or a slight mid-air roll over the guardrail, that has to be further out. It'd be impossible at the first stage. Well, this is what it looks like back here. Let me just stand on this side and we're going in. And then when we're ready for you, Jojo, you just back up with the just back up with the tractor when we're ready. Yeah, got you. Ready?
You gotta be kidding me, man. Look at that. Wow. Okay, to all the haters out there, you can't tell me you're not impressed that I use the K-Rail as a pivot point. Are you ready? That's good. That's good. to this cool edition of Josh's Breakdown. If you'll notice, instead of waiting to the end of the video, I'm gonna just leave this running and fast forward and do it right here just to kind of save time. I've been doing a lot of really, really long form videos lately. Just because these jobs require so much rigging, you can't just do them in 10 minutes. 
So I've had a lot of hour long videos and they've been phenomenal. You guys really like the long content, but this one mainly because of the night quality, I didn't really want to put too much of the rigging because a lot of time we're on our sides trying to, you know, feed the straps through and just meticulous rigging. The action cameras are awesome. It's what Alex has been using for the past year, the action four. The action five just came out and looks like this. It's a nice camera, really cool. I mean, they look just like a GoPro. It's the equivalent, you know, their, their equivalent of it. I like them a lot better. This one though, there's some issues, something about bit rate not being as high as the previous one. So there's a little bit of quality loss, you know, a little bit of compression artifacts. The night mode, it's still a one and one third sensor. So you're not gonna get, you know, crazy night shots, but it does have a night mode. So I really would love, I always come to you guys for the feedback. I obsess over it. Let me know what you guys think between Alex's view and my view. We, we have the same one now. I personally am not a fan of uh, the super, you know, it looks like really, I guess phone quality, um, not a great phone quality either. Contrast is a little weird and the coloring, I had to tweak it in post-production, but um, if you guys are the fans, so you guys let me know. You like my version better or Alex's version better. Based on that, I don't know how to tweak our settings and make these videos look better. So again, that's why I'm doing it over this. I just got this running and fast forward, make it nice and concise. So let's just jump to the beginning, I guess. This was a doozy in terms of how it looked. When you show up on these wrecks, you really never know what you're gonna get. In this case, the description was accurate. The casualty was on both sides of the freeway. I think he probably fell asleep just based on the fact that there was like five, six cars involved. You saw them there at the beginning. They were getting all the cars while Alex and I were setting up the rotators. Damage like that can really only be caused by, you know, speed and not paying attention. So driver was okay. He was there standing at the beginning. If you're fans of the channel, you know, I never really post huge injuries or fatals or any of that stuff. Just property damage left and right. And this fifth wheel plate came clean off. And I've been seeing so much more of that lately. Whereas two, three years ago, I posted a video. And when that happened, I was like, whoa, this is the second or third time I've ever seen that. Yeah, man, it's been like two dozen since then. It just keeps happening. I don't know if people are just getting better at crashing or they're making them weaker. Who knows? But the fifth wheel plate is what connects the trailer to your tractor. The trailer has that kingpin, goes in the kingpin lock, the jaws shut. But lately, like I said, I've been getting lots of jobs where they're either malfunctioning or breaking or coming off. This one, I just think it was a sheer force. It was going fast. The center divider acted as almost like a pivot, a seesaw. It went over and boom, the weight took it clean off. So if you guys are wondering the reason we did it our way, I think it was the best and fastest. There was, um, you know, the option to do it from the other side of the freeway. I didn't like that too much because we would be sticking out too much in the open lanes. You'd have to shut those down to get to the side of it and flip it back up. Our way, we were able to do it in the closure that was already there and bring it to us. That way all the trucks are facing the same direction and you don't have to shut any more lanes down. If we flipped it in the opposite direction, well, the trailer's facing the wrong way now. That means Joe has to back up to it, shut the freeway down, you turn it, and then open the lanes back up. The more we can avoid that, the better. We, we never try to keep lanes closed or take anything more than what they give us. And it being loaded was a bit tricky. At first, I didn't think we were gonna be able to uh, barrel roll it. Usually these trailers, you know, they're not like containers. They're not super rigid where you can just, you know, manhandle them and they could take a beating. There's always a high chance, especially with the load like this, that's, you know, top to bottom, that the wall can give out, especially because the back. The back already came out. There was no, you know, rear door and the roof was already messed up. But we have these two foot wide special made, you know, recovery straps from Bailey's. They do a phenomenal job at hugging everything. And then you use angle irons for more support, for more surface area when you lift. But once we did that and we started going in, it held, we knew it would help, you know, hold the rest of the way, which it did. And in hindsight, there's probably one thing I would have done different. Uh, I would have put Big Flipper in the back to take over Hulk spot, just because Flipper has that 42 foot boom and Big Flipper would have been able to lift and roll the trailer without having to use the center divider as a pivot point like I did. But it still worked out cool. It looked awesome, I personally think. I've, I've never done that and I'm sure all the people passing by thought that was crazy. And once it got to that point, all we did is just let out with our catches, uh, keep more tension on the lift lines, set it down slowly, and then we rotate it once it's over the guardrail so it'll clear our outriggers. All in all, routine job, we got it done. From there, as you're looking at right now, we're working in super overtime fast mode to clear the scene. It takes about, this is about 19 minutes worth of footage you guys are seeing, sped up at 2.5x. So it's gonna come out to about seven minutes or so if I time this right. But in real time, it took about 19 minutes to put everything away. That's all the chains, the straps, the rigging, 
you know, teamwork makes the dream work. Once that happened, Jojo backed up in the trailer and we were out of there. Which is perfect timing because as this part's playing, you can see the sun's coming out a lot right now with sunrise. So right before the morning rush hour, clear the scene. Most of the people, you know, three miles down in that traffic that once they pass that part and we're gone, they're none the wiser that there was just a super huge wreck. Unless you guys follow this channel too, then now you know why you had traffic. Oh, and one more thing you'll hear us I'm talking to the Caltrans people throughout the video and Mike too, that we're all, you know, running super hard lately. This was the first rollover of three after that lithium explosion by now that I'm sure everyone has seen. The one that made, I guess, worldwide coverage now. I got people on that video saying they saw from Ireland, from Spain. So the reach was awesome. The job itself was a nightmare and the repercussions are crazy. <laughs> but anyways, that job on day one we left at 1 a.m., got back to the shop, parked the rotators, headed home, got home. Hey, I got a rollover, so Alex and I got the call, we responded. Again, we're still young, we love this stuff. It makes the adrenaline pump, so I'm sure that's gonna get to us in about 20, 30 years if we're still doing this, God willing, but we love this stuff. You know, if not us, I'm not sure who else would be able to clear these scenes that fast in these areas. The cops love it. In fact, sometimes it's to our detriment. I was talking to Alex in this video, I'm not sure if I left it in, but the cop was like, hey, what's up, Pepe? So what do you guys think, uh, 30 minutes? And even then I was like, oh my God, dude, the pressure's on. These cops, out. once we show up, they already know like, okay, Pepe's is here. They, so that's kind of why we work fast too. They, we've got that reputation we have to keep. But hey, like my shirt says, if it was easy, someone else would be doing it. This is the one I alluded to in the last video. It's finally out now, but this is what it looks like. I did a few modifications. So this is a super high quality one. I'm not sure if I'll turn it into a sweater or tank top, but based on what you guys think, would you like me to turn it into one or maybe a hat, beanie? I can work something out. I'm not sure how it'll work with the graphic, but I personally love it. Like I mentioned, you know, Alex and I, Dave, my dad, we, we all, we love this stuff. We live for this stuff. It's in our blood. So I picked some of my most favorite, most difficult jobs over the years. And at the rate we're going now, I'm going to be making multiple versions of this shirt. But that's my time for now. By now, um, I think by now we're finishing up putting away the trucks and Alex and I are taking off. So on to the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.